Hello, everyone, and welcome to Local Chat, episode 104 here on January 12th, 2023. Joining me this week as I unmute them, Ian Gibson. We forgot to make a January 6th joke last week. Dang it. Oh, dang it. The FBI are outside your home right now. Uh, they are not outside the home of David, who is here back. First episode Hello. since my birthday. Um, way back in don't, September. I was going to say, don't ask me when that was. <laughs> I will not know the answer. <laughs> That's okay. I forgive you. The 10th? Um, 11th? <laughs> <laughs> it's the eighth, actually. Um, oh, that's right. You have the same birthday as my mom. I forgot. <laughs> oh, man. If your mom and I married, that'd be a ton of presents on one day. I mean, you could. She's lonely. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine with me. Uh, <laughs> folks. Wow. Folks. Uh, we're here to talk about video games. We're here. Oh, I meant to ask you something pre stream uh, that I want to share about you, which is that you have the smallest brain of any man I've ever met, Ian. I do have a tiny um, head. I have a tiny head. <laughs> you do have a tiny head. I never noticed that until you pointed it out. God, you're hideous. Um, Ian, you've written down here. I was trying to think. I was going to ask you how I should lead into any of this beforehand, but you have I written here it. Ian's surprise, and I just... Yeah. It's late breaking. It's incredible, folks. It finally happened. We've waited about three years, but the time has come. I am now living in a COVID positive household as of this morning. <gasps> oh, hey, Ian, you know what's funny? Same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, my roommate I has it. <laughs> So, like, it's it's honestly crazy because so Maggie came home this morning from work and she tested positive and then I tested. I'm negative and her dad's staying with us for a bit and he's negative. So we're in this weird situation where we're wearing masks around the house and she's quarantined. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to have it as of tomorrow. Um, yeah. But anyways, it's just weird. It makes that you feel better. Ian. Yeah. My roommates had it since like Sunday or Monday. Yeah, I've not gotten it. I have I have a little bit of a chest thing though. So even though I tested positive, I'm like I, I think it's starting. The, um, the last time I had COVID, which was I think one of the newer variants, Karen had it, and then it was three days after she finished having it that I started showing symptoms, and it wasn't until like two days later that I actually tested positive. Oh, okay, it was like gotcha. such oh, a long, so I'll get sick long. like right in time for the three day weekend, probably. Yeah, cool. <laughs> What three day weekend? MLK days. MLK day. Oh, my company hates black people, so we don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> we get Juneteenth, but we don't get MLK day. Anyways, Jesus. my company sucks. Uh, anyways, no, but it's just it's weird because I was like, literally, she said that to me, and I was like, oh man, and I realized I was upset because. We were doing so good at not getting it like like that first year, 2020, Maggie worked the entire year in a covid ward in Johns Hopkins and we never got it. And then we we traveled multiple times. We moved from Maryland to Florida. I traveled internationally. We traveled domestically dozens of times. We went on a cruise and neither of us ever got covid. And now three years later, we just happened to get it. Um I don't know. We'll just see how it goes. I could die. If if I die, put Primus on my tombstone. That's my only ask. Um, <laughs> Primus. So, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have COVID. I'm sorry you also might get COVID, David. Um, but I hope you don't. Um, yeah, same, uh, man. Ian, you've also written London. Uh, the, the, sorry. I <laughs> just spoiled it. You've also written <laughs> a city that starts yeah. with L. <laughs> Before... We Lancaster, new... yeah. <laughs> hey, they got a they got a nice crepe restaurant there. I've been there. Anyways, um, yeah. So for uh, spoilers behind the scenes, we have a new segment at the top called Chit Chat, where we just put in topics that would be good opening Chit Chat. And before I got a COVID positive household, uh, I put London trip travel gaming. So Maggie and I, we finally booked our spring trip. We're going to London for eight days in. Ooh. Oh shit in like a month so it's not that far away but it gives me time to discuss with y'all and to think 
what should my travel gaming situation be? I'm taking Steam a backpack deck. and a carry on. I'm not buying a fucking Steam Deck for this. <laughs> I think the Steam Deck's too big. Honestly, I think the Switch is too big as well because I'm just taking a backpack and a carry on. Three D. So yes. you can fit the Switch in the, in the yes. backpack easy. I can, but I don't want to take up too much room. I I prefer to travel light. Play Sacred Stones on your 3DS. Oh, fuck. That's probably the answer right there. You can play honestly. any Fire Emblem game on the 3DS and you are not going in a bad direction. Plus, I it's weird. It's just like, Will, I have a magical 3DS that I open it up one day and it has all sorts of games on it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, Mine does that, too. Yeah. So I think oh, I'm we call those mag- yeah. 3DS spicy ones on them over at oh, Save Data. We call them spicy. Gotcha. Spicy 3DS. Is Fire they Emblem? Bring the heat because they bring the heat, you know, they got oh, all okay, the games. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, mine just brings the FBI and the CIA <laughs> now that I think about it. Um, that's a, that's a, that's a good joke. That's a niche. That's a, good joke. <laughs> that's a such a niche 3DS <laughs> that's a good joke. hacking joke. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, I'll probably bring my 3DS. I was tempted. So my one caveat is I really, when I'm on a plane, I love podcast games. Um, mm. so for a while it was Konami pick cross. Um, for like six months whenever I traveled because it was podcast and Konami Picross. Is is Sacred Stones going to be a good podcast game? I think so. The, so there, there's the story bits, and then when you're in the mission, you're, you're, it's just at that point, it's a combat puzzle. So like yeah. that stuff's perfect. So for you can podcast. half pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, oh, so it's going to be 100%. I think you guys solved it for me then. It's going to be Kindle with books. It's going to be... 3ds with fire emblem sacred stones and it's going to be a tablet with columbo and i think that's yes. going to be good i, I think i'm how, sold thank you guys that sounds good. how far are you on columbo i'm only like five or six episodes in i'm taking it slow which i'm i'm yeah. fine i'm fine with i i found well so this I, I watched the first first season back in the spring I, I, for, with columbo it's not that you get tired of it but it's just like you get your fill and then you come yeah. back and you're like, I want more Columbo because it's always the exact same, but it's super interesting. So you're like, yeah, I want more Columbo. They're the perfect length, too. They're like between an hour, hour and a half. So it's like it's more than an episode. It's very fulfilling, yeah. but it's not super long. So it's, it's it's not a binge. It's like a once every three, four days, maybe watch a Columbo. So I'm going to yeah. I'm actually going to slow down a little bit so that I can have a bunch on the plane. So if I get bored on the plane, I can just sit there for eight hours and watch Columbo. Yeah, so like I watched it in the spring and then like one or two over the summer and then this fall holiday, Karen got into it because she was watching a couple while playing on the Steam Deck and she was like, oh, mm-hmm. I kind of want to just put these on while I'm playing on the Steam Deck. And so we watched a bunch and now we haven't since because I've hit that point where I'm like, you know, I yeah. need a different TV show or something and probably around like March or April, I'll be like, ah, let's watch more Columbo. Um, you guys ever get anxious about what you are watching on a plane in case other people see you watching it? I mean, other than like porn, no. Like, I'm not gonna watch porn, porn on, a on a plane, but like, so I shouldn't. Okay, all right. I remember one time I, mean, I was watching Dragon Ball Z, and I was like, "These fuckers better not be judging me." <laughs> nah, unless there's I, like rampant nudity, like I don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah have we with um. Anything. Yeah, I, I usually don't care. Um, I tend to play. I, I actually the thing I do get in my head is when I'm playing like a video game console. I was like, anyone notice I'm playing on my uh, my Steam Deck here? Oh, like, that one I do cool. kind of like to show off a little bit. I'm like, hey, fucking yeah. check them Or like, out, hey, wow. I'm playing a Game Boy in 2022. Oh, yeah, Ian's like... going to really show off in 2023 with a fucking 3DS. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <no. laughs> look look at me, I'm playing a 3DS. Look at all these games I got. <laughs> no one's going to sit next to you if it's a Southwest flight. <laughs> be like, oh, this guy. Packed that in. did work for me when I was flying back from Colorado for the next game. <laughs> I was just like playing my Steam Deck during the boarding and everyone's just like, oh, no, I'm okay." (laughs) I heard a I heard a I heard a tip. I'm curious to try it out. Actually, I think I'm too poor to ever try it out where they said if you're a couple and you're booking flights, when you pick your seats, pick same row, the window and the aisle, because then when other people pick their seats, people are much less likely to pick the seat in between you. And even if they do, you can talk to the person and say, Hey, can we swap so we can sit next to each other? I but I realized I'm See, too poor. I always, I always choose the economy option though. That is like, fuck you. You don't get to pick your, sh- pick your seat. So I'll never get to I do mean, the tip. Southwest, which is what I flew on. You just don't pick your seat ever. Yeah. But Southwest like, is great. Yeah. Uh, no, I yeah. hate that. 
I, I, as a tall person, I hate that policy because I will absolutely spend the extra like fifteen forty dollars for the emergency oh, for exit the leg. seat. So like, I would rather have that guaranteed than go on to Southwest. I would every time someday like to make enough money to comfortably um, fly get business. first class or business class, yes. like not for every oh, flight. Yeah. But just, just be just like, do it a couple hey, I'm, I'm going on vacation. Like, I'm at the point, not financially, but uh, air travel wise, emotionally, that's actually better. Spiritually, that the <laughs> next flight I have to do out to Utah to like see family, I'm like, I might get like an extended row seat, like with the extra leg room. Or if like business, like look for a business yeah. class, sort of like cheaper thing. Oh, well, the, um, the extended row is like necessary for me i'm six foot three yeah and also large in the wide direction so like <laughs> normal seats is suck <laughs> so much yeah yeah i'm i'm six i'm six two so yeah, yeah. ian right knows my pain <laughs> yeah it sucks um but the, but the problem is I, i'm at the point where i'm like you know what I can treat myself. I'm not going to book business every time, but like this flight. So we got, we got a flight. Actually, we got pretty nice. It's a nonstop flight Orlando to London. And it was six, six twenty five per person, which is pretty good. It's not, bad. Yeah, it's not, it's not, we've been getting crazy cheap the last couple of years, but we were like, we're picking the date. We're okay with this anyways. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? We got some money to spend. It's like a nine hour overnight flight. Let's splurge a little bit. What's the business class? And it was like starting at like twenty five hundred dollars. And it was like and, and that's every time I look at business class, it's not like a couple hundred dollars more. It's like, no, take the normal price and triple it minimum. And it's yeah. like, fuck you. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, What's wild is your flight to London is about what I pay to fly back when I fly back to Ohio which I haven't done in a number of years. But when I fly back to Ohio for like holidays or something, that's what I pay just to go to freaking Ohio. Like, so, no, thank you. Yeah. So, so we, when we went to Paris and when we went to Germany, our round trip tickets were 360 per person from oh. DC to Germany and shit. I'm, I'm very wow. good at, at finding good flight deals. That's true. You are. So that's why like 625, I was like, I'm okay with this. I could get it cheaper if I didn't pick the date or whatever, but I was like, no, we want this date. We'll do the nonstop. Yeah. Like, I think I went to Japan a couple times, uh, in like 2016 and 17, I think I went and it was like 600 bucks. Oh, that's times. good. That's good. That's fantastic. So I went. I think I went like October, which was still like it rained more than it would at other times. But like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, thank you guys for helping solve my travel dilemma. Um, you're welcome. Actually, yeah, I'm all solved. I'm all set. Thanks, boys. You're good now. And, and I mean, you can you can have the if you don't like Sacred Stones backup. Uh, pick cross so either way yeah, yeah. you're pretty that's you're pretty point. covered there um, advance uh, wars yeah. Ooh, advance wars uh last although reboot bit. camp's coming eventually maybe so maybe you don't want to do that well yeah <laughs> until there's another terrorist attack and then they delay it again. <laughs> that game is cursed oh, as the first so game cursed. also was cursed <laughs> yes um yeah, it caused 9-11 yeah <laughs> Released 24 hours before 9 11, it was cursed. <laughs> Advance Wars and, and Toby Maguire caused 9 yeah. 11. <laughs> and Miyamoto. Um, last little bit of chit chat here. Um, oh, I, sorry. I, I was hearing something in the background and the rain started up, but it just was like a rising sound that I had no idea what it was. Thought maybe I was getting murdered. Um, I, for the Video Game History Foundation, I signed up for their little uh, donation thing. Where they send you a magazine from history per month, uh, and they have sent me here. I, I, it's in the shiny wrapping, so it's a little, uh, little thing here. The 1996. Sort of uh, let me see. December 1996 issue of PC Gamer, and boys, it's got games. It's got news. It's got reviews. Um, it's got an article <laughs> about. <laughs> Okay, my so I wasn't going to talk about it because we talked about it in the Discord, but my favorite thing is there's an article of a of a guy who took uh, they took like letters in, but like on a specific topic, and the topic was like 
I think it was adventure games and like where, what people think about adventure games and, and where they're going. Everyone who wrote in complained that they don't like these new point and click adventure games where you don't use a text parser <laughs> anymore. And it's not as fun because you just click around the screen and they're not as deep or interesting. And then another person wrote in and was like, I don't like these new FMV games. I know the graphics are better, but there's just no story or depth anymore. And, <laughs> and then everything boiled oh down God. to, we don't care about the graphics. We just want a good story and gameplay. And I was like, that is every article about video games from their inception <laughs> until now. That's yeah. everything everyone complains about. So yeah. I, I read a couple articles here and there. I wrote, I, found a bunch of games that were still on steam and gog that are around oh, nice. that this like from the screenshots and like the way people were talking about them maybe you want to like oh Which i should look that up um yeah because i might was, like that was around when i first started playing pc games so I'm there was masters of orion them. was a big okay. one that um daggerfall was very popular oh yeah uh, yeah there were it was popular enough that two of the articles used the like Hey, you should try this new game when you aren't playing Daggerfall. Like, <laughs> as if, like it's taking up all your time. Uh, sorry, I'm just. I mean, that game up. was like huge, so I get it. Yeah, I I have the Daggerfall Unity downloaded. I need to like jump in and play it. Um, I've never okay. played it. I just I've seen the world and like some playthrough stuff, and I'm like, this is. There for was... the time, this would have blown a young David's mind out of the water. Like, um, yeah. Dungeons and Dragons, Dark Sun, one of the Dark Sun games was like very big. They were like, oh, check this yeah. out. It was not, they weren't talking about it, about everything, but they were like, hey, um, this is coming out. We think it's going to be good. There was the uh, Deadlock, which is a planetary Sounds conquest game. Hilarious. That is one uh, that they mentioned with Masters of Orion. They're like, "Hey, it's it won't it won't help with your Masters of Orion fix, but it, it's similar gameplay." Uh, and then, what was the other one? Was it Azrael's Tear? Yeah, that sounds right. I think I had that game. It was a bunch. It was a lot of like mist style games that you've never heard of because they never got as yeah. popular as mist uh yeah. and then descent into undermountain which was another uh dungeon and dragons game and i think that was it um but yeah it was super cool like it was a fun i was like hey i'll pay a monthly like fee monthly donation to get like a little trip about uh, a little trip down memory lane and like all these old <laughs> games and, and looking them up and everything so it was very fun. Look forward to that once a month when I get a new magazine. Uh, this one was 444 packed pages. Um, they had How? strategy guides for Red what? Alert. 444? Um, it's the holiday blowout issue, which is why. It's, they like, wait, it's actually that's huge. Because the normal yeah. one's what? 120? Yeah, it's, it's a oh my more god. than Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. The, the other thing, they, so the CD-ROM didn't come with it, which sucks. Uh, but mm -hmm. I got to look it up to see if there's a dump somewhere, probably on archive.org. Um, yeah. It comes with a certificate of authenticity, which is nice and like says it's been dismissed from the collection. It's in incredible shape, mm -hmm. this magazine. It's like brand new. And um, yeah, like I said, they have 26 reviews, uh, a bunch of stuff. It was like a whole section on how to beat certain levels in Red Alert, like strategy guy <laughs> stuff. Um, it, it made Red me miss Alert reading so good. magazines. And how like much getting is the, that like hyper specific information? Yeah, how how much is that thing? Well, because I already donate to the the Video Game History Foundation through work because they match it. Mm -hmm. But like, oh. if I can also get some PC, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like, so cool. it's fifteen bucks a month, no, I believe. Plus shipping. I don't. It depends on what the shipping is for you. Uh, I think mine was 40, two bucks, or fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah. five hundred dollars. And then you can choose an era, or you can say send me any magazine. And oh, I, I believe fun. I chose Send Me Any Magazine because they um, they recommend that one if you're not sure because they have a lot more of newer magazines than older. Um, so they'll they'll kind of send you. I, I don't think there's anything, obviously, from like 2010 forward, at least in America. There aren't a whole lot magazines of... magazines aren't very big, but... 
I mean, there's, they probably have a bunch of game informers, and that's about it. A couple Nintendo yeah. powers I, before I, they. Yeah, I assume they have a lot of PC print. gamers. I, I don't think you're going to end up with anything rare, um, obviously, yeah. but it, it's a fun little. They would once sell a month, that like... and actually put that towards the. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. The foundation, yeah. Um. So yeah, I oh, like. Oh man, wait, skim sorry. It. sorry. Sorry, quick aside, that just reminds me, one of the museums I went to in Belgium is a World War II museum. The town was uh, part of, you know, the back and forth during Battle of the Bulge, etc. And at the end of the museum, as you left, they had like 50 or 60 like World War II, like Nazi and American memorabilia. Like, hey, this is a tin can. This is like an inert grenade. These are some boots and they were all for sale. <laughs> so you could buy them from the museum. And, I, and we were like, I don't know how I feel about that. And then we were like, actually, like, they're just surrounded in this shit because, like, yeah. it's like they find it in the fields. Like, there's, like, literally tanks in every town that were just abandoned when they were destroyed. So it's like, yeah, I guess it's OK for them to sell this random shit as money for the museum. That's yeah. And I imagine they're, they're selling their stuff that they're not going to ever display because it's not like qual yeah. like high enough quality for what they want to show or whatever. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the last thing I'm going to say is at the back of the issue, they have the. Um, like review index so you can look up what a game got reviewed as and oh. reading through it there's a lot of like high 70s 80s low 90s that i've never heard of and it's like i want to go <laughs> see if like i mean they were good back then like they might not hold up perfectly with like modern controls but like i want to see how these play like what were the like like not the elden rings but like the little the ones below it that were like just coming out so be interesting yeah. to see um moving on i had a good segue from the stuff the people in europe find outside in their battlefield to the roman stuff that pentiment farmers find in their in their uh fields david played pen you beat pentiment right or you're still playing yeah yeah, yeah. i played i played through it played through the whole thing tell me all uh, tell me how much tell me your thoughts i I'm a little mixed on it. Overall, I'm positive. Like I, I enjoyed Pentiment, point and click adventure game. I don't know if you've talked about it. I'm assuming you've talked about it on here before. Yes, um, yes we have. But cool medieval point and click adventure game. Um, went a lot of cool places. For me, I figured out the who done it pretty early in Act One, which kind of pulled. Like I was basically just waiting to find the motive for for. Mm. the killing and who the killer was because like i figured it out very early wait wait uh, a minute but how how certain were you or did you just have that hunch i was pretty positive and then in act two i was like it could be this other person who's very closely related to the person i knew it was mm -hmm. but it's probably the first person and then in act three that it revealed that i was like oh it Okay, okay. It's, it's who I yeah. thought it was. And oh, in fact, I was closer in Act 2 with my, <laughs> my guesses. But like, yeah, so like I kind of knew who it was and I was really just spent a lot of time waiting for the game to let... Like, if the game let me look into what I wanted to look into yeah. early, it would have been A, shorter and I think more fun for me because I would have... Like, I'm literally sitting there like, okay, I know what happened but the game won't let me figure out what actually happened. It wants me to follow the game's like story, like the way the game wants you to find the story. So that was like a little frustrating. Um, and that's just, you know, that's a mystery game thing. Like if you figure the thing out early, you, you just kind of have to keep playing until the game wants you to actually find out the mystery. Yeah. And, and there's stuff along like, so I had my suspicions in act one that were confirmed in act. I want to say act two. Um, because I noticed, I noticed something that I was like, oh, I think it's this person. I didn't, again, I didn't solve, I don't know how much you solved. I didn't solve the whole puzzle. I didn't realize certain aspects of it, but I was like, I'm suspicious of this person. And I fell into the same thing where I was like, they were giving me missions for the act one and two and three, like stuff that happens and you're investigating them and i'm like i want to go ask this person about it and they yeah. only help in certain ways and i'm yep. just like no i it has to like i'm like i'm like, I'm like there's i'm wrong but there's these notes that are really important that everyone really just for whatever the heck reason decides aren't that important yeah that was my biggest problem was like there are these notes that are very incriminating and we're not like following <laughs> 
a trail at any point and the game doesn't let me follow them as much as I yeah. want to. But also, like, if you ask the person who did it, hey, is this your handwriting? They're obviously going to say no. Um, but and also, technically, it wouldn't be. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> but also, yeah. But it's funny that, because I... I you sound more confident. You were more confident in Act One. I was. It was very confident that I didn't necessarily know that, that person was the murderer, but I was a hundred percent confident yeah, that that person involved. was involved. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I got. And to the because... other person in Act Two, I think I was confident was also involved, and I was like, okay, one of you, one of you two did the thing, and the other <laughs> one did something related, and I just don't know which is which. And you refuse uh, to talk about it. But you just refuse to let me investigate this thing. <laughs> but like, I, I really, I did enjoy it a lot. I still like had a really good time with it. I think a lot of the, if they could have done a better job at keeping that hidden, I think I would have like, I would have liked it a lot more for sure mm. because the the stuff they do with, um, I don't think this is really spoilers, but like, basically at the end of each act, you're like, a, you know, putting someone up to trial, right? And you, you're deciding who you're putting up to trial. So the way that they do that, I thought was very cool. In that, I don't think there's really a canon solution to any of them. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I, I thought the way that they did that was very cool, and I, I enjoyed that. the The first one, I was very confused, like what's happening, like because uh, uh, i was expecting there to be an actual answer right it's so, like yeah. the first trial i'm like there has to be an answer and then it gets to the second trial and i'm like okay no there's no answer <laughs> like, <laughs> there isn't an answer to this question uh, the um the like musical sting it plays whenever you read one of those notes and like yeah. like the killer's mm-hmm. theme so good, good. so like good. every time i found one because you're just like la 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 me- medieval simulator let's talk to all the people and then it's like and you're like oh it's like oh and you just feel unsafe for a second and you're like oh no yeah um, well did i did i one. miss the tutorial prompt to toggle running i think it's i was on pc oh oh yeah i'm not sure it's, it's there is a run. i just i i was like halfway if not more through no. i might have been up to act two by the time i knew i could run <laughs> yeah i, I I don't think they ever tutorialized because I remember being like, am I running faster? And then I was like, oh, I am. So like it wasn't Ian is looking confused. Like he didn't know there was a run button in that game. Hi, is there is there a run? It's button? a toggle for PC. Yeah. It's you can't run indoors, run. but you can run outdoors. Yeah. Oh, like, well, I think mine. Indoors. I think mine was just on by default, though, because I never toggled it. Oh, so when man, you're indoors, was... he walks slow. But when you're outdoors, he does like the slightly longer gate, right? No, he gets really like yeah, an no actual full run, run outside. Full run outside. Yeah, I. It's a. To- are you? Sure, are you sure it's not on by default? Because. Are you? Did you play on PC or Xbox? Sure. I played on Xbox. Yeah, I did too, and now I'm wondering if I just held it as a placebo. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, because he just... like full runs. In, yeah, in, he does. In outside, I'm just like I feel like I just missed a prompt, like I just blanked out and totally missed it but like i didn't realize you could freaking run until like act two <laughs> I, so like i was wow, going from like suck. the bottom left to the abbey and i'm like yeah. oh, this game takes so long that i found toggle for run i was like oh okay cool the thing I'm an idiot. <laughs> the thing i found most exciting about pentiment outside of the main story is experiencing medieval life in a way that I had never obviously experienced it before. And not that it's a hundred percent accurate, but it's fairly accurate to it. Yeah. And also the fact that so many people used to just be okay with shit that yeah. people complain so much about these days. It's even to the point where like these people are inherently now Christian. They, they yeah. are, have Christian values yet. They still do their traditional, like, weird christmas stuff and weird saint john eve and everything and if you did that today you'd be like burned at the stake for trying to push some weird well like tradition on people and the time period they chose wasn't at least to me felt very intentional where it is that time period where they're taking yeah they're taking those customs and traditions and warping them into 
Christian traditions. Totally. Where it's it's it was things cool you can to... see where you're like, oh, I see how this thing that they're per- they're showing transitioned into like a Christian holiday. Like I get yeah, it. Yeah. I, I just like seeing those those traditions where like half the people are like, I don't know why yeah. we do this. My grandfather did it. So we keep doing it. And I was just like, that's <laughs> yeah. nice. Like I'm glad you the, can do this. The other mechanic I don't say mechanic, but like device that they used really well that I didn't expect is just sharing meals with people. Like I did not expect that yeah. to be such a deep and important mechanic where it's like, you're just talking and eating food. That is really all that's happening. But like who you choose to eat with changes the information you have. The yep. food that you're eating changes based on the means of the people that you're eating with. Yeah. And even I think it was it's after I think it's act two when you eat with the family you stayed with at the beginning of act one, like their situation has changed. Right. And the food mm-hmm. they have has changed. And like, you can feel yeah. some of like the desperation and stuff that they're feeling. It's used yeah. really well as a story device as, and like by making you actually like mouse over, at least on PC, like mouse over and click the food that you are going to consume. Like you're seeing what the things are made of. So like, you can see like, Oh, the peasant people, they literally are only eating bread. They just don't have meat. It's not a thing yeah. they eat. It's not available to them. And then you eat with like the Abbot and he's like, oh, well, literally everything's made with meat. It's great. Having a great time up here in the, in the, <laughs> the, Abbey. the Abbey. Like, so it's, it was really cool how they did that. Uh, I really appreciated it. At least I thought it was really cool. Did, mechanic. Um, did you guys, I, the, not struggle isn't the word I want, but did you think about the order you wanted to eat food? Because I kept yeah. finding myself yeah. do that. Yeah, I don't think it mattered, but yeah, totally. No. But I was like, oh, I want this. I want the soup first. Then I'll have bread. I was like, mm, and then I, should, um, I gotta, I gotta be thankful. So let me take the bread egg? first. You know, I don't want well, to be greedy. <laughs> I think there was one where I forget who I was eating with, but I got like two pieces of bread and then bread porridge. Yeah, and I'm like. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I gotta, you know, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat one piece of bread first as the appetizer, and then I'm gonna have the bread <laughs> porridge, and then I'm gonna have the other piece of bread last so I can scoop up the soup, which isn't, you don't control any of this. This is all just in my head. <laughs> but oh, like, I so absolutely was, was thinking too. about what things I wanted to eat. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, because it's just like, I wanna enjoy this food. I, I, I wanna be a crazy person who just like dives right in. Like, you gotta be fun. Yeah. And after every one of those meals, I'm like, I could go for a piece of bread and a piece of cheese right now. Just like. Oh, yeah. Like, and what is it? Andreas like loves rye so much. I'm like, I could go for some rye. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> I could go for a loaf of rye right now. I'll take that. Yeah. Oh, great Good game. game. Good game. Fantastic game. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, anything else you were enjoying, good sir? Oh, I've been playing a bunch of stuff, so uh, plug, shameless plug. We're doing our game of the year top 10 discussion tomorrow on Save Data Cast over on Save Data. Ooh. Ooh. So, there are a couple games that I've been, you know, had but hadn't finished or hadn't started and stuff. So, over over the holiday break, I, I just ran through a couple of them. So, Pentiment was one, that was the most recent one I went, ran through. Uh, Neon White, I had gotten like halfway done around when it launched, and just like I was playing it on PC because I'm one of those nerds that like refuses to play shooters not with yeah. a mouse and keyboard. And then I just got burnt out of being at the computer all the time for work, so like I just didn't touch Neon White for like months, and I came back to it over over the holiday break. And man, that game is so good. <laughs> I don't have, you, have either of you two played that. Uh, let me put it this way. It is very rare that we cut a stream short. It has happened about three or four times, and I cut the Neon White stream short because that fucking story and characters are fucking insufferable. So I, I mean, just killed it. The story gets better, it. but uh, yeah, I get, I get not liking the characters. That's fine. But the just raw gameplay of that game Gameplay's is good. Yeah. so good and the further you get in the better it gets like there it it, mm-hmm. it never takes a dip down it is always just climbing up the different weapons you get the different abilities those weapons have the level design in neon white is like mind-bendingly good mm-hmm. there are just like so many secret things you that you can do there's so many different paths you can take 
the being ranked up against your friends and the developers if you want is super oh. cool. So there's like, like bronze, that. silver, gold ace trophies for each level which have a specific time assigned to them that you can see. It's like, hey, if you beat this time, this is the the type of trophy you get. Uh, and then there's a hidden trophy that's not displayed that is beating the developer's time for the levels. Like, their, mm-hmm. their best time between all the developers. And I, I got one of those for, like, I want to say, like, three-ish levels. Uh, there's a ton of people who just do it for all of them because they're absolutely insane. insane just run through everything but on that out there like min maxing looking up how to do like not exploits but like absolute best ways to do things on youtube or anything but they have the developer times in there and like beating one of those like the first time one of those pops up i'm like why is the trophy red what is this and i get like a steam achievement and it's like oh you beat a developer time on this level and i was like this is so cool <laughs> <laughs> this is so completely rad uh and it, it's just so good i I had such a fantastic time just of raw gameplay. The story does get better as you go. It starts off pretty bad. I'm not going to cover that up or anything. It starts off yeah. real <laughs> real rough story-wise. And the characters are... They're, they're fine. Um, but yeah, I had, a, I had a really good time. I think the story does get better as you go. Uh, and if that... Ge- like, if Neon White had a really good story and really good characters... It oh, might yeah. be like in my top ten games of all time. Like it's so good. <laughs> yeah, I can see uh, that. Yeah, it's so good, and it has a cat named Raz in it. Mm. And my cat's name is Raz, and it's a total coincidence. Did you make you named the game him before I the did. game? Came I out. named him before the game came out by like a year. How'd you know? So the game cat is named after your cat. No, so I figured out what they did. <laughs> uh, my cat is named after Raz from Psychonauts. No. Uh-huh. And their cat is named after they're, your cat. No, no. So their their cats life. in the game are angels. So there's three oh, there's three named cats in the game. There's Mikey, your, Gabby, and Raz. And your cat's an angel. No. The cats are like shortened names of angels. So Mikey is the Archangel Michael. Gabby is Archangel Gabriel. Gabriel. And Raz, I think, is Raziel or Raphael. Jesus. But yeah, they're just like shortened versions of that. I didn't connect those dots until like 90% of the way through the game. And I was just like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> they're just the archangels. Jesus. Uh, but yeah, no, Neon White, really good. Uh, had a good time with that. And then I also picked up Tunic. which I see someone else also played a little bit of Tunic. Uh, so pick that one up. And it's pretty good. I, I think Will. I know we. The last I saw you talk about it was about the same time I picked it up, which was in either the same data or Subpixel Discord. I forget which one. Talking about how the first thirty minutes of that game are horrible. Yeah, <laughs> they suck. <laughs> They're absolutely terrible. I'm surprised he hasn't patched the thirty first thirty minutes out. Yeah, I, I played the first. I played the first hour, and even knowing how much better it was going to be eventually, I was like so off put by the first thirty minutes that I was like, "No, nah, I think I'm done. I think I'm." They good. give you a stick to start off, and the stick is garbage, and like the enemies yeah. just like murder you, and then you get a sword, and it's fine. Yeah, yeah. but like up until you get the sword, that game actively sucks. <laughs> yeah, and um, will have you beaten it yet? Or are you still playing? No, I'm in the. Pyramid? Is that what it's called? Um, or the uh, so? Did you, have you been to the Scrapland, the quarry? Yeah, yeah. I, okay, I beat so the game, so like, oh, okay. So I'm in that purple place underneath the quarry. Oh, um, you're in the other not fun part of the video. Game. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know what, David? I've stopped there. Um, yeah, there. That's the man. That's the thing. That's the thing I keep hearing about this video game is it has like really high highs and really low lows. Tunic, so like that sucks. Tunic is. Like, Will, you're gonna you're not gonna agree with me on this, but I'm I'm gonna say it anyway. Tunic is like a shorter Death Stranding for me, in that the beginning of Death Stranding sucked and the beginning of Tunic sucked. Yeah. The middle part of Tunic, so good. Middle part so of Death good. Stranding, so yeah, good. So good. Chapter and then three, yeah. Death Stranding, once you get to the mountains, for me, fell off a cliff. 
I tunic. Once you get to the quarry for me, fell off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I'm I was having fun until I got down inside there. So I got down inside there. There is a story moment that happens that is incredible. Yeah. Like I stood there for maybe 15 minutes contemplating like what like just amazed and then i walked forward and then there was the worst <laughs> enemy i've ever fought ever Spiders. and i was like nobody <laughs> likes enemies that when you kill them they turn into s two smaller versions of themselves Ugh. which like no oh, Ian, nobody Ian, likes those that is a small portion of why those enemies suck because if they hit you including the little ones they not only reduce your yeah. health they reduce your maximum health. I'm so happy to hear this because there's part of me that was like, I should go back and give that a second shot before game of the year. But now I'm like, no, I've already been yeah. spoiled. I know what it does good. I know what it doesn't do good. So I it, don't need to play it. It now. was also nice. Like I, I knew going into it that there were like hidden paths. So I was mm -hmm. already checking yeah. everywhere and finding them. There's still ones in that game that are just like, uh, like you, you have to go through it once to know yeah. where it is. Like you won't find them. So those were interesting. There were a lot of cool mechanics, a lot of cool areas, um, cool camera stuff. Uh, but yeah, just the point I'm at, I'm like, I think I'm good. I'm done here. I thought about turning on the no fail mode and getting through oh, that yeah, area that was and like reducing yeah. the combat. I might go back and do that just to get through. I but think that's a also, good idea because like once you get through there, here's a boss fight, obviously. And then the game is good again. Okay, maybe I'll do that. So Cause learning it's <sighs> Yeah, uh, there's I, there's like a 10 minute part after that that gets bad for like 10 minutes again. But okay. you can just turn well, no fail maybe I'll do again. that. <laughs> um, learning that like the inscrutable instruction book that is cool and like slowly reveals itself. Like you don't fully like get the mystery of it towards the end. Like there's still like a a big puzzle for figuring that out. Like that put me off as well because I was like, I want to finish the it game and understand. I don't. It wasn't too bad of a puzzle. Like I was talking, no. Zach. Zach was is way high on on tunic. He absolutely loved tunic. Yeah. Um, and I like I as I was doing the puzzle for that, like I was messaging him. And I'm like, is is this what the puzzle is? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you got it. You got it. You just have to solve it. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I know. Him. I'm like, I know what I need to do to solve <laughs> the puzzle. Do it. the it's to gonna do take it. me an hour of real life time to actually go through and figure out the answer to the puzzle. I'm just gonna look at a guide. Oh, I know how to okay. do it. I just don't want to do the work. Now so that, that's kind of what I did. And you have gonna finish it to get it. there. I, you don't have I, to even do that. <laughs> like that's I messaged Zach and I said, Hey, listen, do the coffee stains mean anything? And he said, No, I don't think so. And I go, Oh, okay. And then he messages me, well, maybe for the final puzzle. And I'm like, what the, f what the fuck does that mean? So uh, the only reason I asked him that is there's two pages next to each other. And one of the page has half of a coffee stain that isn't on the other page. I don't so I thought, I thought it might be important. connected. But also I figured like the person could have folded the the instruction manual yeah, in half and put the coffee on it. I don't know. I don't I, think it, it was that like an important. oversight for a design thing to not have the full coffee ring. I don't think it was that important. Um, if I remember correctly. Good. But, but there, there is a puzzle at the end without spoiling things. There's, there's two ways to finish the game. You can solve the puzzle or you can not solve the puzzle. Yeah. Or you can just quit. But, or you can, there's three ways. There's three ways to end the game. You can, the game. <laughs> you can solve the puzzle. You can not solve the puzzle and do it a different way, or you can just not Quit. finish. The game. <laughs> I did the last one. I did the last yeah. one. Yeah. But like yeah. I, it was one of those things where I'm like, this is really cool. This is way too much work. <laughs> like I'm like, this is really cool. This is way too much work. There is, oh, maybe maybe don't finish well. <laughs> Oh God! There's now one part. To. There's one page of the instruction book that you need to to finish that puzzle. That sucks. <laughs> Have you that... found any fairies, Will? No. Uh, you just go to YouTube. Just look up the ending on YouTube. That's what I did. 
Yeah. Well, I didn't look up that. the ending. There, there's they, a like, like, there's a page game... where you need to find ten fairies, and I had found maybe two naturally. Ten? I've never yeah, found, I found a fairy. Yeah, I found two, and I was See, like, game... okay. <laughs> This game I'm is just like, gonna look these up. <laughs> to me, this game is like the epitome of like, oh, that's neat to hear about. I'm glad yeah, I don't have to do that myself. It's cool. Though. Shout out to all the guide writers. Um, y'all, y'all yeah. rock. Thank you so much for that game. But yeah, no, like I, it's a game. Like I said, like Death Stranding for me, it's a game where it started off really weak, and I was like, I'm just gonna get past this part and see if it's good. And then I was like, oh, this is great. I love this game. And then yeah. towards the end, I was like, oh, well, maybe maybe I don't love this game. They <laughs> really great, though. Music is fantastic. I was going to buy the vinyl and then it got listed and it's like one hundred and twenty dollars. And I was like, no, no, thank you for that. Um, But yeah, it really felt like the designer had everything locked in. Excluding the, the puzzle stuff, like for combat and balancing and everything. He had everything locked in except for the first 30 minutes, which is horrible considering that's the easiest to get play tested. He probably should have fixed that. Uh, yeah. And then mm-hmm. the quarry stuff specifically was like, okay, you didn't know how to make these fights scale to be more difficult. So you just reduced my max P my max HP all the time. Yeah. yeah. With me not being able part. to really mitigate it at all. So I'm like, okay. <sighs> Yeah, like it felt like he got lazy there, and I'm like, oh, and also, just that. tell me what these upgrades do. Don't make me figure out what these upgrades do. I just want to upgrade. I just look them up and know. Yeah, what they do. yeah. I, I remember that. Yeah, because some of that. them are bad. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. some of them are legitimately like um, this will hurt me more than it helps me. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Okay, that's enough on tunic. Uh, did you want to talk about your walkabout mini golf VR? Oh yeah, just shout out to walkabout mini golf VR. I don't know if y'all have. It's like the most popular VR game, I think. It is just mini golf. They have a bunch of themed courses. It's very chill. It's a very cool thing to do. Like my my sister moved away last year, so like we just chill in mini golf now and talk when we want to want to talk. And it's super awesome. They have a bunch of like super affordable DLCs that are like a couple bucks for a course, and they do themed. And what made I wrote that on here mid show uh, because you had mentioned Mist. And they added a mist <gasps> map relatively oh. recently that has like some of the puzzly things built in as like extras, like the whatever puzzle you do to get the ship to come out from the water in the game oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is like yeah. there as an environmental thing you can optionally like just oh, fiddle into. So cool. So cool. it's it's cool. Just like huge shout out to walk about mini golf. It's very good. The devs are super chill. They're they have one of the most popular VR games and they're not milking it, which is incredible. Nice. Uh they have and every time they do new courses, they just keep getting better and better. Like they did a labyrinth themed course, like nice. the movie Labyrinth, which was very cool. Uh, they did Mist. They've done. They did like a twenty thousand leagues under the sea thing. They just Ooh. do a bunch. Of, they've been doing a bunch of cool stuff. If you got VR, check out Walk About Mini Golf. It's super affordable, super fun, uh, and it's very. It's it's the perfect game if you want to hang out with someone and just talk. It's a metaverse. It's yeah. the real metaverse, not it's the, the real stupid metaverse. metaverse it's it's, it's you want to hang out and talk. <laughs> yeah. You want to hang out and talk with someone with a super low intensity game and just like chill and talk. It's great. Highly recommend. That's all I got on that one. Yeah, sweet. That's cool. Um, quickly, because we were talking about Pentiment for way too long. Um, <laughs> Fuck off. It's our podcast. Let's take a time. Let's take. Time. Yeah, that's true. Um, oh, no, I didn't mean like quickly, like rapid fire. Uh I have been playing uh, Ian and I and Zach on the Tuesday of this week played some Warzone 2.0 DMZ. Your Zach, not my Zach. Uh, sorry, not your Zach. I was very Zach. confused for a minute. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> the better Zach, as we call him. Um, <laughs> That's fair. Some Warzone 2 <laughs> DMZ. You know, it felt good to play some Call of Duty shooty 2D. Yeah, for all the weird stuff they do with those games, good and bad, the shooting just still feels great. It does. 
the like little hit markers and then you get like the XP sound and then when you yeah. level up it's still that like guitar riff. You're just like, yeah, I'm leveling up. Yeah, and when um, you start to get used to the movement a little bit more, so you're running around sprinting, like sliding, sliding. starting to pop goobers. It's oh, good. It's good. And I was doing some of the things where, like, you know, people doing battle royale where they never stop moving and they're always like moving around like this. I was doing a little Fuck bit of that, that, just some dancing. Um, <laughs> it's fun. I, I like I like not having the stress of every single enemy is another player. You can practice yeah. on the AI do get pretty well at it. You can tell when they're players, um, which is great. Um, it's a little bit stressful because you have to extract from the DMZ zone. But overall, for a free game, uh, it's super fun. I've been tempted to buy the Battle Pass because it keeps showing me all the cool stuff I could unlock. Um, but I think I want to get through some of those story missions and stuff, unlock some things before, uh, before I continue playing it more. Um, yeah. How many so people is DMZ? Three. three? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So just to say it, um, it's one to three, so you could go in smaller. So just to say it, DMZ is Call of Duty's take on basically the escape from Tarkov. Oh, uh, yes. L loot and scoot genre where you drop into a zone, you loot whatever you can, do XP missions, etc. But at the end of it, you have to survive and extract. And if you don't, then anything on you gets dropped in the zone. So if you take in your favorite gun and you lose it, barring some insurance mechanics that gun stays in there and doesn't come out with you so it's it's just like like call of duty felt like it was getting very stale and to a certain extent it is still stale but them deciding that warzone their battle royale should be free and then expanding on it with dmz and occasionally doing free multiplayer weekends is them taking it in the right direction they're opening up this game to a lot of people that previously played and have left or have never played but now can play for free and I'll tell you this, I bought Modern Warfare 2 yesterday, the full $70 game, <gasps> because I was like, you know what? I'm, we're going to play a lot of DMZ. I know I get more XP. I want to play some of the normal multiplayer, too, and maybe I want to play some of the single player. And it's all because I played DMZ for free and went, this feels great. I want more of this game. It's it's uh, I, I'm not like back on the Call of Duty wagon like I used to be for like probably one through five, but um, it feels good for them to break out of their rut and find something new and interesting that's working for them. Yeah, it's fun. It's a good time. Um, I finished up, I think I talked about this last week, finished up Fallout New Vegas. Uh, I have uninstalled it from my Xbox 360 and I have instead installed it on my PC. Uh, <laughs> I spent about two hours today setting up the mod manager with all the mods I want. Uh, I think I'm going to stream a bit of me playing with a randomizer mod I found. Um, <laughs> oh, so there's a, yeah, I saw you like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a ran So there's two randomizers. There's uh, the second one I found, which randomizes everything. So enemy placement, weapons, uh, like Ooh. characters, like a character could become a ghoul and you still talk to them, all that sort of stuff. Or you can play where it generates every door opens to a new room in the entire world. And it's not a random door every time. It just sets up a new path for every single door in the entire game. Uh, the oh, only okay. exception. So you is, can learn, you can learn the path. Yeah, you can learn. Uh, and the only exception is a couple elevators because they don't work properly because they have multiple exits. Um, and that just like set me off where I'm like, oh, so I, so I, I'm going to install that. I also installed, there's a bunch of like adding stuff back to the wasteland that was cut and all that sort of stuff in DLC and everything. So now oh, it's this yeah. big harmonious thing. And then you can also add Fallout 3 to the Tale of Two Wastelands on PC. So you can have all of the Capital Wasteland and all wow. of New Vegas. Oh so, God, I didn't realize that. Okay. So when I was going through my mods, I went, there's this thing called, I think it was Viva Las, Viva New Vegas is this guide to setting you up with a mod manager and installing the right mods. And when I was installing a couple of those mods, I saw the TTW version, which is Tale 2 Wastelands. So I think I might try to backtrack and do that and then have the randomizer doors across two Fallout games. Oh my uh, God. Of maps, which hopefully works. I, I, I didn't check the documentation to make sure it works with Tale 2 Wastelands. Yeah, you have to make sure they're actually compatible. But like, yeah, that's... So, so if not, I will be streaming myself 
either way, playing a Fallout game with the randomized doors. And I might... You can set up profiles in the mod manager, so I might set up and try a completely random uh, version of the game and see what happens. Uh, it's just... <laughs> It's, I've always wanted to play a randomizer, but I never knew games well enough to like play yeah. the randomized version of it. And I'm like, this game, I know this game very well. Like, I just beat it and uh -huh. I played it a lot. I will be able to do pretty well in it. So I'm excited for that. Uh, I think I'm going to plan that out for a stream slot. I might, I think I'm going to try it once as just a, uh, like a one off and see how it works out. Um, and then finally, Mech Warrior 5. Uh, that Mech Warrior news came in about a new Mech Warrior game. I can say Mech Warrior as much as I want. Uh, and I was like, oh, let's go check out Mech Warrior 5. Um, you know, not bad. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm curious what you think about it. The problem I have with Mech games is they always seem really cool. And no matter how good the game actually is, it's kind of like driving a tank. I just don't enjoy it, you know? <laughs> I like, yeah, don't enjoy the act of mech about, movement. What about you know? like Armored Core 6, though, you know? <laughs> I'm definitely going to try that. But but honestly, well, I played 4Answer. I bought a PS3 just to play 4Answer earlier Ooh. this year. <laughs> and I did enjoy it a little bit. I didn't play a lot of it. But honestly, the, I, the, the Armored Core controls are a problem, but it's not the usual mech problem because the mech problem is usually like, go, 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 you know, I just don't like yep. those. Is, is that the problem is that you don't like the mech feel the same problem that I have? Are you, are you speaking to me? Yeah, sorry. Is that the problem you're having with Mech Warrior 5? <laughs> okay. I kind of uh, mumbled through that. No, that's fine. I just wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, yes, a, a little bit. So the, the legs turn independent of the upper torso which I started mm -hmm. to get used to. There's a little tack map at the bottom that shows you what direction your yeah. um, your legs are facing, which is helpful. Um, also, the game defaults to third person in the mech, which is great. Uh, like, I like the, the cockpit view, but the third person, like, helps with the realigning the legs as well. Yeah. Um, it's the most mid-2000s game I've ever played outside of the <laughs> mid-2000s. You're just, like, yeah. you're in a little base... Um, the first person controls are god awful because it's not a first person game, uh, like for the character. But you're like walking around the base, talking to the different people. You get your mission assignments. You go on your mission. You're mercenaries, so you go. You pick a mission. You go on it. You complete it. You pick what salvage you want from it. Uh, and then you like, you put in. If your mech gets damaged, you put in work orders to fix your mech, and your mech is repaired over a certain amount of days and you fast forward the timeline to your next mission or to your next, like, so it's very like almost XCOM mixed yeah. that like management style mixed with the, with the mission yeah. style. It's the mission so far have been pretty easy. Like you're defending a spot or doing something and, and the mechs are way more Gundam than I thought they would be. I thought they would be Let's like, go. Uh, like StarCraft mechs. I guess StarCraft, what? I don't know. Like the oh, usual mechs they're, you see with like the two I legs you, and the weird I, squat body. Yeah, I see what you're saying, but they're not, not really. Because Gundam is like, Gundam's like fucking Superman. <laughs> like they're just no, like no, no, fucking no, 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 no. flying yeah, yeah, all yeah, over yeah, the totally, place. Totally, totally. Yeah. But these are like, these are mechs that look like humans. Is yes. I wasn't expecting Yeah, that. humanoid. Yeah. yeah. Humanoid mechs. So, so that's neat. <laughs> um, I've well, skipped every single story thing. So... <laughs> Earlier um, when you said this was the most mid two thousands game, I was like, "Oh yeah, when did this come out?" Twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Like five. I didn't real I didn't realize that was a dig on the game until I looked <laughs> at when it came out. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, it came out in the mid two thousands." Okay, like it's just it's a yeah. product of the time. And then I looked and I was like, "Oh no, oh. it came out in twenty nineteen." <laughs> Granted, yeah. the the last Mech Warrior game, single player game, came out in two thousand two, so it's been a while. Um, yeah. Although I heard the onlines are pretty good, but well, the, the the team that made Mech Warrior Five first, they made Mech Warrior Online, which was like a free to play multiplayer only Mech Warrior in like the mid twenty tens. I, I would say if you're enjoying that, but you don't like the first person third person version of it. BattleTech, which came out a little bit before Mech Warrior 5, is a turn-based strategy. 
and it's it's pretty good. I've heard it's that's like the exact good, yeah. yeah, it's like the exact same thing. It's just that you're taking turns with your mechs to be like movement, move here, take this shot, go on Overwatch next turn. Yeah, because uh, you said that, and I looked that up, and it's very. I was like, oh, maybe I'll try that because I. I don't. I don't know if you guys. I didn't know Mech Warrior, Mech Assault, BattleTech are all the same universe. I thought yeah. they were different oh. games. Um, so they all take place, and there's a huge like board game RPG scene. <laughs> I was like, what? Well, that's that's where that's where it started. It started as tabletop. I, yeah, I, I had no tech. idea. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they're they're all similar. The the 2002 one, the Mech Warrior three or two rogue something um i always forget the name of it i have on xbox i've thought about like popping that in to see what it's like because that is the one i think jeff gersman says is he like had a blast with when like, it or because there's also mech assault which is a slightly more arcadey uh, xbox uh, series sorry yeah mech assault two rogue something is the one that came out in 2002 yeah. oh, yeah. that i think is really yeah. good so i'll, and then, I'll check and that then one out mech and then Mech Commander, I believe, is kind of the like small unit RTS type one, I believe. So yeah, I there's a lot I'm, of Mech games. Yeah, Will is on his uh, is on the lookout for the next great Will game that he's gonna play next. Um, I'm stuck. Fire Emblem Engage next week. I Do, know, oh I'm shit! Is that next week on the twentieth? Yeah, I'm um, literally like I was on the fence whether to go to my work's holiday party or not. And it's well, on the, the 20th. are over, so. Well, <laughs> I'm okay. Just, day. just do it late. But oh, it's on the 20th, okay. and then I was like, "Oh, that that just chose for me." Like Fire Emblem goes yeah. on the day. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say something a little spicy here, but the previews where people are like, "This is not Three Houses," so which is bad, and I'm like, "No, that's good because Three Houses added a lot of bad stuff to it." And well, I'm glad I they're mean, taking it out. They're just getting the word out to the people that don't like other fire emblems but like three houses that they're like hey this ain't your game yeah. this isn't the one for you this is the one for the people who already like the series before three houses yeah the so, true fans yes I, i'm not gonna go that far <laughs> oh i already did i've only Jason played would. sacred stones i've only played sacred stones i started the one before the binding blade is the one before sacred stones i started that one i i didn't get very far so those are the only that's the only fire emblem games i've played are those two um maybe this I'll one's play more one. similar to those than yeah houses. maybe i'll do that I, i'm just like I, there's a bunch of pc games i want to play but i i still have don't want to sit at my computer after work Unless they're on the um, Steam Deck, man. <laughs> Karen's using the Steam Deck for Graveyard oh. Keeper, so I don't get to use that. I'm playing Pokemon Emerald on my analog pocket occasionally, like when TV's on and I need to play something because I can't just watch one thing. Uh, what am I, 80? Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was looking through Xbox. I was like, I tried Morrowind for a bit. I was like, oh, maybe I can finally like sit down and play Morrowind. It's 4x3 on the Xbox. I can't play <laughs> four by three on my 4k <laughs> screen it looks awful <laughs> i was like that has to be on a pc so um yeah i i think i might just go down the trail of more obsidian games i was thinking pillars of eternity for a nice long rpg i don't know if there's an xbox no. port of it there probably I is I, I installed on pc it's 50 gigs but i might see if there's an xbox uh yeah. version of it yeah i just I'm on the next lookout, so everyone, everyone, let me, let me know what you want me to play. Uh, Ian, hi. Tell me about Card Shark. Yeah. So, um, uh, speaking of game of the year, our discussions will probably be in two weeks, and this is the first time we are doing a site ranked top ten game of the year list. Last year was the closest we got, where we sat down and we talked about our personal games of the year. And it was kind of funny by the end of the discussion, we were like, hey, it's Pentiment, right? Like we weren't going to pick a winner, but it's Pentiment, clearly. Oh, sorry. Yeah. In inscription. We were like, <laughs> we're not going to pick a winner, but all of us love inscription. So it is inscription, um, which was our weird ass way of backing into a game of the year last year. But this year, we're really going to do it. We're going to sit down and we're going to rank our top 10 subpixel games of the year. And my concern is I listen to a lot of game of the year discussions for several years now, a couple different sites. 
I know what works. I know what doesn't. I know what I like. I know what I don't like in terms of methodology and process. And my big concern is we're putting that hat on for the first time. And I don't want to miss a game that I play next year or two years or three years from now. And I go, holy shit, that was the game of the year. How did we miss that? Um, so because of that, I've been trying to kind of go through and just play a whole bunch of different games, at least touch them and see, hey, is this something that is like sparking some joy here in a Marie Kondo way? Um, so I touched Card Shark, which uh, Card Shark, all I remember was it was in a direct, I believe, and it looked really cool. And then it kind of just disappeared and it came out. And I didn't even realize it. So Card Shark is the game that is, um, I believe it's 18th century France. And it kind of has that style and you're playing different card games and it looks like it's just a stylish like card game, but it's really not. You're basically playing this person who is a who is a, a pauper and you're an orphan and this con man picks you up and takes you under his wing and basically says, hey, I'm going to teach you how to cheat at card games. And it's kind of bonkers because you're literally learning how to cheat at card games. <laughs> like, like, I'll, g- I'll give you two examples. One example is like, OK, it's not that crazy. But the idea is like, how do you take a card that somebody has picked and do a fake shuffle and know where that card is? And so they're like, look, here's how it works. You know, you put the card in the deck, you know where it is, you kick it out slightly, you do like a fake cut, and then you maintain that displacement of the card. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, here's how you do that. You know, you press uh, down to cut to that card and then you press right to mark it and then you press down to keep cutting the deck. Um, And so the whole premise is that like you're sitting at a table and you're trying to con these people and there's like a time meter on the bottom and it's slowly ticking up and that's their suspicion. And if you make a mistake, the suspicion goes up. So you're trying to play these card games or like be at the card table as like the waiter and do all these tricks. Um, But like like it's fucking crazy because it's teaching you like real card shark techniques. Like there was this technique (laughs) that it's so simple, but I never thought of it, which is if you're dealing the cards and everybody's put their cards out on the table, so they're all face up. You just you pick them up in a certain order so that you know where the cards are in the deck because you've picked them up in that order and then you fake the shuffle. So it's like, for example, like the whole thing is like, Hey, if I know that I'm fourth in the deal, then I need to pick up three shitty cards and ace, three shitty cards and ace, three shitty cards and ace, then fake the shuffle and then deal. And boom, I'm going to have three aces in my hand. And it's just like, that's so fucking simple. So then all of a sudden it's like, it's like, here's the table. Here's 20 cards on the table. Which cards are you picking up in what order? And the timer's going up and suspicion is right and you're just like oh fuck oh fuck oh fuck so you're like trying to figure out the the way to like do this con um and from what i can tell there's like 20 plus cons that you learn and techniques problem i have with the game though there's a big fucking problem i may try the game again to see if there is a difficulty setting because it turns out the game is like stupid fucking difficult for no reason so so the way that the game works is it's almost like cheating is difficult (laughs) It's not that. It's just like <laughs> stupid punishing. So so there's a map, right? And there's different locations. And you pick a location and there's like a minimum bet to play at that location. And there's specific people there in a specific game or or um, con that you're going to play. And each con is kind of like a mini game where you have to learn how to do it properly. You learn how to have to learn how to read the cards properly. And the whole time the suspicion is rising. Mm-hmm. So it's it's. It almost feels like mini games are quick time events, but there is a little bit of thinking to it. And the problem is in pretty much all of them. If you make a mistake, if you make just one fucking mistake, the suspicion goes too high and the people are like, you know what? I don't want to play with you anymore. And you leave and you lose your money, but you lose your money from your fucking save. So at the beginning of the game, like let's say you have like 20 coins and you go to some table and you're like 10 coins and you try the mini game. You make one fucking mistake. They take 10 coins, kick you back to the map and you're like, fuck. So then you do it. You go, you go to it again. You do the 10 coins, you get kicked back to the map and you're like zero coins and you're like, what the fuck do I do now? And then they're like, okay, well now you have to do the three card Monty con to get enough money to go back to those tables. So then you go do the three card Monty. But if you fuck that up, then the guy stabs you and you die and then you have to play a mini game with death. So it's like this thing. <laughs> it's like like the best description I can think of it is like if it's it's like if you're playing DDR and a single false move just kicks you back to the start screen. That's what it feels like in this fucking game. And it's like, why did you ramp the difficulty up that much? 
and especially at the beginning because I'm Sounds only like an like hour the into the game. first 30 minutes of Tunic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy because I was enjoying it so much. So I may try it again if I can go in and find a difficulty slider and just be like, just put it on piss easy. I just want to get through the story. I want to teach these cons. I want to I want to learn this stuff not to use in real life, but just because it's so cool the way you're showing it, presenting it and like how you're doing the manipulation on the sticks to like shuffle the cards and stuff. But the way they just laid the actual gameplay out and the the procedure of it and the punishment of it, incredibly off-putting, which is very upsetting. That's, That's Card Shark. Yeah. Card Shark, I'm not playing it. Um, okay, let's... Uh, well, actually, I want to say, David, since your discussion is tomorrow, have you played Case of the Golden Idol yet? No. Has Did anybody you, at Save Data played Case of the Golden Idol yet? Not that I'm aware of. I look. I know if they what did, Will's it's saying, not in their top ten. Because <laughs> I, I do I, have I everyone's top ten. ten. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to jump ahead of you, Will. I'm hoping that's what you're going to say. That is like Inscription, in that it is a fucking sleeper game of the year candidate, strong. Mm. But the problem is, it's not getting nearly enough press. Yeah. So, oh yeah, Inscription was like spreading like wildfire. I haven't yeah. even heard of the Curse of, well, was it I was Curse of say, the Gold Idol. Curse case of the of Golden, the golden Idol. Case, case of the Golden. Sorry, you're, you're it's totally incredible. Right. Case so, when, so you're looking for games that could be game. At least give that a shot. I think I it's mean, twenty bucks. Our podcast steam. is tomorrow. I'm gonna be honest. Finish it in it's four, not happening. Five hours. Yeah, it's only hours. like four or five hours. I have to yeah. work. <laughs> no, don't Fuck work that. tomorrow. Colin's sick. You're sick. You look. You have a temperature. <laughs> you have COVID. I um, like. I, I'm not gonna hold this against you, but like, literally going back to the earlier conversation. Play some. Case of, of the Golden Idol is one of those games where if you play it in three years you might be kicking yourself that you're yeah. like, fuck, that should have I been mean, game of I'm the already year. kicking myself because I didn't finish uh, Immortality. Yeah, I didn't yeah that's, that's one I, that's when I haven't started yet. I need to start. Y'all can't, you can't get on me for curl a case of the Golden not, Idol to not oh, play okay. As someone who's played I'm bold. not judging you. I'm just, I'm just like bold. strong recommendation. That one is worth well, a try. Did, that's my point. Did you play Obra Dinn? No, but I know what it is. Okay, okay. Yeah, it, it, it's a two D Oberdin basically. Uh, oh, shorter I didn't think, and, and I didn't think Oberdin changed the world or anything. It's better, no, than but it's it's better than oh. I think yeah, I agree. I think it's I better mean, than Oberdin, and it has a great. Story. If you're saying it's a game of the year candidate, then it would have to be better than Oberdin. Yeah. Yeah. Oberdin was it's, good, but it wasn't like I would just yeah. bring it up tomorrow. Say it. Say Subpixels recommendation. At least today. apologize for not playing it. Yeah, I'm just I guarantee you hedge your bets. Listen. I guarantee you I will forget, but right now in this moment, I got you. Gosh. What I'm time did you stream tomorrow? Twitch chat. Yeah, uh, same. Translating to Eastern eight eight Eastern. Okay, so, so I'll 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 join the stream. I'll do it too. Uh, I'll take Chris's place, obviously. Uh, and <laughs> hey, yeah. we're having fun here, David. What is your prediction for the sites number one? What's yours your or mine? Because I know yours ours already. Oh, so wait, I know. Wait. So the way we're doing ours, we're doing uh, like a raw scoring thing, which is flawed. But basically, everyone has given me their top up to ten games, oh. and then I have scored it. So what that does, it do, it does skew it towards games that people have played. But yeah. so what also is, what they're is, not going to argue for games they haven't played. So I feel like it's probably fair. What is what? Is, so what is tomorrow? Is tomorrow just the live reveal of you revealing it to the rest of the staff? Yes. So it'll be like, gotcha. we'll, we'll go through, we'll talk about each game, like what we like about them and stuff. And then we'll shout out our, okay. our so uh, we, ones that didn't make never. the list. And then also we do, we're going to do some awards, kind of like the, basically oh. not game award things too. If like, what was our, what was the most surprising game? What was the most disappointing game of the year? So like uh, five so rewards as quick as you can say them. Um, and then yeah, and an then hour ends. of commercials. Yeah. Yeah. yeah gotcha. Basically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we, we, we sent all of our top tens to Karen who tabulated them raw score, like number one is 10 points, number two is nine points. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, tabulated them all up uh, and then gave us the list back with... Which we have not gotten. No, she sent it to us. And you said thank you. <laughs> oh, that's right, that's right. Oh, she but the point us, is... Wait, yeah. Let me fucking finish. Go ahead. <laughs> she sent us the list back sans numbers. So we don't have the value. We just have one, two, three. Like, we don't have the number of points. So you don't know if... Ah. if yeah. And then all of those games. So we knew if we had to play... If there was a game in the top five that I hadn't played, I know to go play it because it's going to come up. And then we're going to discuss them and rank them. The four of us are going to rank all 
10. Yeah. yeah so, no, so we, we don't yes. have the time for that. <laughs> so we did, we did the voting thing, but we only did it just so that we knew, hey, with this last couple weeks, what are the games you should actually focus on playing yeah. versus number 14 or 15? Um, I will I mean, say that's, that's kind of yeah. what I did just naturally by going yeah. back and playing ones that I knew were contenders. Yeah. And so the other the, thing we did people at save data had talked about, except for Pentiment. Yeah. That one I was like, no one talked about this. I'm going to play it because like we missed this one. So no that's one, oh my God. So that's what we did this year was literally January 1st last year. We said we are starting a list and anytime somebody comes across a game that they think could potentially be a top 10, it goes on the list. We are all sharing that list. So that way throughout the year you could go to it and be like, that's a, that's a good way to do it. And that, that made it a lot easier. And, and so the reason why I didn't remember that Karen sent the list was because because I was following the list, I'd already played like the top 10 games. Yeah. Like so that way there wasn't a catch up. We already knew. I think we're up to like 15 or 16 games on the list. Like those are the nominees for the top 10. Everybody's aware of it, yeah. et cetera. I will say we, we already have some ties. So there, there will be more than 10 in our top 10 probably. <laughs> oh yeah. She, she marked ties on ours, but we don't know. Again, we don't know the value, but we're, we're, we're short. Our list is like, yeah. our list is, 10. I think it's like 20 games. No, right now it's like 20 games <laughs> that we're whittling down. To oh, I think it's like 15 or 16. Unless yeah. people didn't nominate games that they put on their top 10, in which case, yeah. tisk tisk. But yeah, yeah. like I, I like to get the, the score stuff ahead of time, too, because I like I did some I was like doing some fucking math just to see like if things change based on like if I weight the top one or two games higher than the rest of them. Like, does that drastically change like how the scoring yeah. goes? And the answer yeah. for us was no, not really. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> how did you well, how did you do the points did you do 10 9 8 or did you do like I just 15, did 10 9 12? 8 I did 10 9 okay. 8 and the, literally exactly what you just said I did 10 9 8 and then when I was like trying to wait him to see if it did anything I did 15 12 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 yeah uh, that was the exact numbers I used and everything <laughs> yeah so but it'll yeah. be fun yeah yeah, game of the year is fun. I I wish we. I think the problem is we don't have enough time or commitment to do more categories. Just because I know the top ten is going to take us like two to three hours alone, and I think I'm the only person that has the stomach for that. Plus more. Yeah, and one of the things for us too is like a lot of us don't like the same games too. So like, if someone's yeah. going to say like this is a top ten, like obviously Elden Ring's on our top ten, right? <laughs> number eight <laughs> it's on the top 10 so like i but i'm not gonna pay 60 dollars or 70 dollars for a game that i know i'm probably not gonna like i'll yeah. pick that up later on sale but like i'm not yeah. i'm not willing to spend that money for a game that i'm like super iffy on so and yeah. there are other like i have games on my list that no one else is gonna play because they're like this is i'm not gonna play this crap what is this yeah so um great uh you boys you boys got time for the news quick news let me ask time. a question is there anything worth it in this news i really don't think so i can quick hit it if if we're okay yeah, with that i don't know david yeah, you're we, the guest can, is there anything can, in here you want to discuss we can just do some quick hits i'm, I'm good quick hits that. well I, okay so we'll i have a couple things to say about a couple <laughs> No, I'll hear. Uh, you want me to no, hit well, the news? No, I want to talk about your. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, you want to talk? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me hit the news. It's time for the news. Great song. I heard all of it. Oh, you didn't hear it? Uh, well, we it was heard cut, cutting pieces. in and out. Oh, good. oh, my, my, my level limiter is too high on, on, ah, Discord. Um. Ubisoft cancels three unannounced projects and Skull and Bones. Stop me if you heard this one before. It's been delayed. <laughs> this folks. is like the sixth time that game has been delayed, like officially been delayed. <laughs> um, wow. Um, yeah. So this was I. Um, I so I don't mean to cut in here, but well, quick hits. Do, so. I don't think Skull and Bones is the story here. I think the story is that Ubisoft is in a free fall here. Basically, they survived the 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 hostile buyout, but part of this is they had to, uh, according to CNBC, quote, depreciate around 500 million euros of capitalized research and development and narrow its focus to fewer titles, end quote. Like they're basically saying, hey, look, we're losing a shitload of money. We're having to cancel a lot of expensive products and all of our games right now are underperforming. Like 
Ubisoft is in a really bad state and their stock took a dive today yeah, they're because in, of this. They're in trouble. Yeah, it's, so this isn't just Skull and Bones delay. This is them basically having like a, a shareholder meeting and saying, hey, things are looking real bad right now. So I think the article said they canceled another like four or five games last summer. Yeah, so they've yeah, canceled like seven VR. or they've canceled like seven or eight unannounced titles in a year. Yeah. Which is sorry, the, the, their shares plunged as much as 21% today. So the nice thing is now that we're like picking the news stories, we get to like research and everything. And then this person who didn't pick the story gets to swoop in and just say all the cool stuff. Uh, Quick hit. Which hits. is great. Love it. Because I, well, let um, me just say. Well, I'm, I'm just rooting for say Skull all and Bones. Quickly. Take your time, Skull and Bones. But please release the game before your publisher oh, yeah. goes under. Oh, I don't give a... Listen. I don't give a shit about Skull and Bones. This game How is going to be a you. garbage fire. Oh, it's going to be a piece of shit. Solid seven. It's going to be the most solid no. fucking seven it's you've ever seen. It's going to be a seen. solid five, maybe five and a half. How dare you? It's a four. Give off. Give off. Listen. Please... Just stay alive long enough for me to get Beyond Good and Evil 2. Oh, uh, it's yeah. dead. It's not going to happen. No, no, no. It's yeah. announced, so it hasn't been canceled yeah. yet. Joseph Gordon Levitt, <laughs> hear my cries. I feel like, didn't they, didn't they, what's in something come out about it recently? Like some images or, or something recently? No, not recently. There was like a while ago, the, the creative director retired. <laughs> it didn't go into like, zoology or something like no he, he, like he already animal. had a wildlife sanctuary so he's just like i'm yeah. retiring and i'm just gonna focus on that because he had Good a separate him. studio which i i'm assuming is just gone at this point that was working on the game wild any of you remember wild yeah yeah Wild. that was the same creative director <laughs> oh, that poor guy uh i mean it sounded from articles that he was not great so maybe maybe not but oh, man just y'all Cancel Beyond Good and Evil 2 <laughs> once already. Just let me have do it. it again. Just let... I don't uh, even care if it's bad. I just need closure. It was soft. Don't get don't get your hopes up. Because because at the end of this article, the company also said that they're going to cut co- cut costs by about 200 million euros through a mix. That's of a lot of people getting laid off. That's a lot of people restructuring, laid off. divestment of non core assets and employee attrition. So there the are only... some layoffs and cuts coming. Well, it's a natural employee attrition, which means if people leave, they might not refill the spots. No, it just said and employee attrition. The uh, the actual translated quote is natural. Employee oh, attrition. natural. Okay, um, gotcha. Um, but they're still going to lay people off. Like that's going to happen. My the only thing giving yeah. me hope is Ubisoft Montpellier, who makes Beyond Good and Evil also does a lot of engine work for a lot of the other games. Oh, so I'm like, hopefully they don't. <laughs> I mean, I mean, U- Ubisoft, though, like they brought this on themselves. They kept just making bad games and sequels to those bad games in the same exact made, way over and over again. They remember, made remember what, really weird decisions like yeah, Roller but, Champions. What was that? Oh, Hyperscape. What was that? <laughs> I forgot remember when they games. remember when they delayed Far Cry 6 and other games and they were like we're rethinking how we're designing games and making them more like invested I, and watch Far, Far Cry and Far Cry no, sell they, better than almost all of their other games so they're going to keep but, doing Far Cry no but the point is they literally came out and they said we are delaying Far Cry 6 we're yeah. delaying Watch Dogs Legion because we want to take time and they delayed them like 6 to 12 months and then the games came out and they were the same old shit and it was like <laughs> literally they said we don't want to make the same games over and over again and then they delayed it and made the exact and same fucking the same game. game. Yeah. yeah. Um, Fuck yeah. Ubisoft. David, tell me all about Sony's new project. Project Leonardo. Because it looks like a turtle and it's a ninja turtle. Uh, this is a cool, just wholesome thing that Sony's doing. They are working on an accessibility controller. Uh, akin, but not at all similar to Xbox's accessibility controller. They look nothing alike i don't think True. they function at all like um, i think they do because like uh i mean th- you in can... in the sense that they're highly customizable you can like link yes. them and and do those types of things yes in terms of like the xbox one is like two pads and like some buttons yeah. they look they, they don't function the same um 
I just think it's cool to finally see someone other than Xbox doing this work. Totally. I I, I know Nintendo came out a little either previously or after, I don't recall, um, saying that like they don't plan on doing one, but like they want a standard basically, which is mm-hmm. what I truly want because I think that's what it should be. Like, so I want Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, yeah, uh, Steam, Epic Games to all come together, all put money in, and be like, we are going to make the most accessible controller for all of our stuff, and we are all going to support it. That's not going to happen. That That's an ideal situation. But Sony coming out with their own solution to a similar problem uh, is super cool. I'm glad they're doing it. And from what some of the accessibility experts and consultants have said, they're like, it's the two are not competing with each other. Oftentimes they are just solving different accessibility problems because there's people that the Xbox accessibility controller doesn't work for because they have different capability. Like everyone has different abilities, right? Uh, So there are some people that the Xbox one doesn't work for that the PlayStation one will and vice versa. Uh, So just making it, so that more people can play games in the way that they need to is super cool. Uh, and I just want to shout out all the, those efforts. Cause th- like, it's not a profitable thing to do. So just doing yeah. it is, is sure. It's a PR thing, but like it's genuinely making people's lives better without monetary gain, which I think we need more of in this world. To your point about um, standardization. So both the Xbox and the Sony accessibility controllers do have 3.5 millimeter jacks for external buttons so there is there is a little bit of crossover it'd be nice to see like you're saying even more standardization from there part yeah, of me and wants I know to buy with some hackery you can get the xbox one to work on playstation i'm hoping yeah. there is equivalent hackery to get the playstation one to work doesn't on doesn't the dualshock 4 work on the xbox series it might because the xbox is basically just a pc at this point and the playstation is just a bluetooth controller (laughs) there is part of me that wants to buy one of these controllers and use those aux inputs because those aux inputs are basically just like fucking analog (laughs) switches at that point so you could do a lot of stupid stuff like two shoes and being like tap the shoes it's a button press you know the problem is they're like 150 bucks it's too much Tap the shoes. Um, yeah, that sounds great. I, I Sony's been a, or not necessarily Sony, but like, well, I guess Sony because Naughty Dog and the well, not necessarily Sony. Gorilla games. Yeah. Is that who does have those incredible accessibility options in their games? Oh, even the new God of War yeah. had some really That's, good ones yeah, too. And, yeah, yeah. Santa, Monica. Sony, Santa Monica. Santa Monica. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of. Um, those are crazy. So it's it's good to yeah. see them match that on the hardware side um it's great yep um ian you had put that there's a developer direct xbox developer direct live stream on january 25th so folks look out for that it will yep. not have anything to do with starfield so don't that look forward to that but it'll be redfall yeah. um and a couple other games so be excited for that redfall uh, forza or yeah, redfall ones? forza uh e- e- elder scrolls online and minecraft legends <sighs> and minecraft legends yeah uh, and then, uh, Ian, every time I go to put a wish list spotlight, you have somehow beaten me to the punch. Oh, is that uh, what this is? This, I didn't know what this was because there wasn't a thing in here earlier. Yeah. Hang on. New segment. Yeah. New segment. So, Ian, tell me all about your pick. So wish list spotlight. We pick a game that has not been released yet, preferably on Steam, and we talk about it. It looks cool. You should go check it out and wishlist it because wishlisting matters a lot for the Steam algorithm. Uh, this week's game is Space Rain. That's R-E-I-G-N. I actually came across this today. This is, uh, it is, I'm going to read the quote here, an indie space sim and strategy game featuring ship and fleet combat. It, it, this is, it's pretty cool. Um, at first glance, it just looks kind of like like an Everspace or something like that. But then when you start to read into the details, you're starting as a single ship and you can do combat or you can do economy and build up your 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 uh, wealth. But then you can buy multiple ships and then all of a sudden you're going to a fleet and then you're doing fleet versus fleet space combat. But then you can also 
one of the best things about one of the best things but most underutilized in the rts genre is in the middle of the battle being able to take direct control of any of your units so you can pick up one of the ships space rain r-e-a r-e-i-g-n nice space rain sorry your audio cut for me and i don't know why that was cool weird. game go check it out cool Wish game listed. Check it out. Wishlist it. It'll be uh, <laughs> if you're listening to this where well, you're listening to it. It's in the details notes. So go listen to it, folks. Uh, that's going to be it for the show. I'm going to hit the outro button here. David, thank you for coming by and having a little Pentiment party with us. It was delightful. Happy to be here. It's been too long. Uh, where can people find you and what do you want to plug? Uh, you can find me over at twitch.tv slash save data team save data team really on all your socials uh, and tomorrow that's January 13th Friday the 13th spooky uh, we're going to be doing Ooh. our top 10 of the games of 2022 so tune case in 8pm pacific case of the golden idol case of the save golden idol case of the golden idol case of the golden idol that's your game of the year uh, you can find subpixel content subpixelfilms.com brings you to our link tree check out all of our stuff we'll be back this weekend with a nice stream probably warzone 2 uh because it's what we're playing right now uh and then next week more warzone 2 and let's chat so we'll see you all then hit me up if you have space i might come join you oh toby i've never played it but i might come join bye